Childhood bone fractures have increased between 35 and 65 percent over the past four decades. Experts aren't sure exactly why, but they note deficiencies in vitamin D, calcium, and a lack of physical activity do increase the risk of fractures. Here with advice for setting the stage for a lifetime of bone health is WSJ reporter Sumathi Reddy. Hi, Sumathi. Great to Hi. see you. So many people start to worry about their bones in their 50s, but at this point, that's a little too late, right? Yeah, so basically half of your skeleton is laid down you know, during puberty, during adolescence. So that's when really um, problems or deficiencies in bone health. You know, and then after the age of 20 and 30, do your bones just start to D decrease? Or yeah, so peak bone mass is somewhere between 20 and 30, and after that it's about, I think, decreases about 10% per decade. And for women, particularly the decade of menopause, they, it, there's a dramatic decrease. And so there's very specific things you can do with then in childhood in terms of nutrition and weight-bearing exercise that can mm -hmm. help your bones, correct? Yeah, so the three main things are sort of regular physical activity, particularly weight-bearing, um, something as little as jumping. There's been studies that have shown that jumping 10 t for 10 minutes three times a week have led to um, improved bone mass, so that's an easy thing to do. Um, vitamin D is a big one, and of course you don't get a lot of that from your diet. So if you're in a place where there's not a lot of sunshine, or you're not, or using sunscreen every day, you probably want to take a supplement. Or for a children as well. Yes. That's so for tell us about the new study in the journal Pediatrics that looks at bone fractures in children and what might be red flags for parents. So these are guidelines that are updated you know, periodically, and um, they note this increase in fractures, and they um, mention a few red flags. One is if your child under 10 has had two fractures or more. Another, if your child under 19 has had three fractures or more. And then a third is if, you ha if your child has a condition like irritable bowel syndrome or diabetes or things that might make uh, bones, or you know, an eating disorder, things that might make bones less uh, healthy. So what also about the type of fracture? Can that tell you anything, if it's a vertical fracture or if it's... Yeah, so another big red flag is even if you just have one fracture, but it's a vertebral fracture, so like in your spine or femur, that's a big one. So that's going to raise a red flag. And, and, you know, there's no recommendation that bone scans are done for children. Right. But if you fall into any of these categories, then that's probably something. And so if your child is having too many fractures or these types of worrisome mm -hmm. fractures, is that a sign that perhaps their diet needs to change or they need to do more weight-bearing exercise? Or could there be a genetic component? So, yeah, genetics does account for 80% of this. So, yes. So those, And then, you know, I guess once you do a density scan, your doctor would help come up with a plan, whether it's a vitamin D supplement or taking more calcium in your diet or particular exercises. Do doctors recommend bone density scans for not, all children? Not or? routinely, no. Okay. So just if you fall on those, you know, two fractures, three fractures, or, or a sort of unusual fracture that's not right. caused by an accident or something. I fell in that category as a young dancer. Yeah. I got lots of stress fractures in my yeah, feet, yeah. so I know exactly what you're talking about. It's very important. I make my kids drink lots of milk, right? Yeah, yeah. so milk, three servings of dairy, important. you know, is important um, to, to get that level. Very, very useful information, Sumathi. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for having me.